The port of Vancouver is a step closer to a major expansion. It's one the port has been working on for years. It's wound its way through the regulatory process and now has won approval from the federal government. This is Canada's biggest and busiest port and it's going to move forward now with the Roberts Bank Terminal 2 project. It's a new container terminal in Delta, BC. We're joined by Robin Sylvester, President and CEO at Vancouver Fraser Port authority thanks very much for joining us hi andrew good to be back with you great to talk to you again just remind us how much will this cost and what is the scale i mean how much are you enlarging your port here yeah we're, we're expecting the project put together is going to be over three billion dollars it's a really big investment and it's a really important investment for canada's future how much in percentage terms will it expand the port's capacity it's going to add about 50% to our capacity in container handling. And to put it in context, I mean, we're by far the largest port in Canada. I mean, if you look at just export trade in containers alone, 20% of Canada's exports in goods to Japan, 20% of Canada's exports in goods to India, go in containers, go from the port in Vancouver. So it's so important for Canada to have this new capacity. We're going to run out of capacity towards the end of this decade. This, this announcement by the federal government, this decision to allow us to move this project forward, means that as a nation, we can have confidence we will have capacity for future trade across the Pacific, for imports and exports. It's so important to Canada and so important to Canadians. So I'm just trying to, you say it'll expand the overall capacity of the port by about 50%. But is this the Roberts Bank terminal, it'll be a bigger increase for that one? Can you clarify? Well, in total, we, we currently have three large container terminals in the port. Between them in total, handling around 5 million TEUs, sort of 20-foot containers a year. Mm -hmm. This project alone is going to add another 2.4 million TEUs of capacity. So it's going to add about 50% to the container capacity. One of the existing terminals is at Roberts Bank, adjacent to where this new terminal will be. The other two are in the Barad Inlet, just near where I am in the port offices. Um, one of those terminals, in fact, we've just successfully completed a, an expansion of with VP World, the terminal operator, our partner in that expansion. So we've been building out capacity wherever we can, but we've run out of options other than doing this big expansion now down at Roberts Bank. And it's such good news that we've got approval to move this expansion forward, because without it, we were going to run out of capacity on the West Coast as a nation to, ma to handle our container trade across the Pacific. Now, from the graphics and pictures I've seen, it looks like you're virtually building an artificial island here. Well, in effect, we, we are. We're expanding the existing artificial island. We're going to be creating about a, just over 100 hectares of new land to create this facility. So it's, it's a big project. And that's, of course, part of the reason it's had such an extensive and prolonged environmental assessment process to make sure we can do that without negatively impacting the environment. Right. So it's, it's a big project. There's a Sorry. lot of habitat being created as an offset. About 500, 567 hockey rinks of habitat are going to be created to offset the impacts of building this new land and make sure the environment's protected. Sorry, Robin, I kind of talked over you there for a sec. Maybe you can put that picture up again. I'm not sure if you can see it, but... Sorry, I can't. I've, okay. only, got, I've only got the camera. Sorry. But, okay, but the... So there's kind of an... Uh, we're on our screen, we're seeing a thing off to the left. Um, so it's a whole new, roughly rectangular addition to the existing artificial island. Correct. Now you About do... 110 hectares. Uh, sorry, sorry, Andrew, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. We want to hear from you. Go ahead, please. I was going to say, it's about 110 hectares of new land being created, exactly as you describe, as a new rectangle, which is the ideal shape for a container terminal, connected along the rail causeway so that trains can be sort of loaded with containers on the terminal and then taken all the way across the country to Toronto, to Montreal, to Quebec, even down into the US. So it's, it's, a, it's a new facility designed, creating new land, and as I was saying, uh, to, to offset the effects of doing that, we're building a huge amount of habitat in all of the federal conditions that have been part of the decision to make sure the environment's protected as well. I want to get into that in a second, but you mentioned that uh, um, a square or rectangular shape is ideal for a container terminal. Why is that? Well, effectively, it means you have the ships on one side, you unload the containers into the yard, and then you have the rail on the other side. And the containers sort of naturally flow through the terminal from the ship into the yard, onto the trains, and out. It's just the optimal way of minimizing the transfer time within the terminal, having the most efficient setup. So when you have an opportunity like this to, to build a brand new terminal, you design it in the most effective way. And that's why it's a, a, a new rectangle that flows the containers from ship to train most efficiently. 
I mean, some of these container ships are pretty incredible. Apparently, the MSC Tessa has gone through the 24,000 container mark, uh, something like 400 meters long, 400 meters long. Can you take those big ones uh, at the new terminal? We will be able to. It's another part of why this terminal is so important. We currently only have one terminal in the background on the picture we were talking about that can handle those biggest ships. This one gives us another terminal with the ability to handle those biggest ships. We're not yet seeing them in Vancouver, but history would say that over the coming decades, we'll probably see ships that size coming. And it's really important to have a competitive option, to have a new facility that's also able to handle those biggest ships so that we remain competitive, that we get goods into and out of our country in an efficient way. That matters to Canadians. It means that we have if sort of we, do, we don't have runaway pricing because the supply chain costs get too high because we're dependent on the U.S. We're going to have efficient capacity here in Canada. It's why it's such a good news story. One environmentalist, though, is saying that this could be a death sentence for the southern resident killer whales. I mean, this Fraser Delta is an ecological gem. You say you're going to recreate um, habitat, but that's tricky to do. Oh, it is. I mean, it's complicated. It's something that we've spent literally decades learning how to do, studying scientifically. We've had over 100 scientists working on the environmental aspects of this project. We've got multiple scientific reports that have all been assessed through this 10-year environmental assessment process. So it is difficult, but it's really important. And we've built up the depth of knowledge, and we've worked that through with the Impact Assessment Agency of Canada to come up with this suite of conditions, the 370-odd conditions, mm -hmm. That mean we can be confident, Canadians can be confident, and ultimately the government was sufficiently confident to say, yes, this project can be done properly, it should move ahead. So there's no doubt that it's difficult. That's why there are 370 conditions. But we're very pleased to be able to move it forward and have the conditions in place that means we can do it in the right way. And you've been going through environmental assessment for a decade on this thing, I believe. We have. It's been a long process. I mean, it, we've been through the, the Federal Designated Environmental Assessment Process, the most robust environmental assessment process we have here in Canada. And we're known for having strong environmental protection. So it's been a long process. It's been really thorough. It's gone into the, the southern resident killer whale issue that you mentioned in great detail. It's looked at other issues like biofilm and wading birds, shorebirds in great detail. We're creating a lot of habitats that's going to be very beneficial to salmon, which of course is food for southern, southern resident killer whales. So it's all been studied as it should be. And we've got a lot of conditions in place to make sure it's done properly.